to me, it's like when you watched what we saw, Damon, um, we don't we don't talk enough about Jordan Mason. We just don't. We don't. I don't know why, but we just don't talk enough about this kid. 24 carries for 123 yards, 5.1 a carry. The 5.1 a carry is what I kind of wanted to fascinate on for just a second because this is what this guy's game log looks like this year. 5-3 a carry against the Jets, 5-5-0 a carry against Minnesota, 4-1 a carry against the Rams, 5-1 a carry against against New England. He's averaging 4-9 a carry for the season over a month of football. It's rare to see a running back that's a regular, you know, that gets regular carries go for go for over, you know, 150 on the ground, but it also is incredibly rare to see them go for over 5 yards a pop per carry. And especially when you're not a speedy guy. Usually it's like, you know, a guy who's like, "Oh my, my god, he made one guy miss and he took it to the house and it was 90 yards and that's why he's averaging 5 yards a carry because he just had that one long run." This guy's not a speedster. This guy is a big 5'11", 225 pound power back with nifty feet, and he's averaging over five yards a carry for his career. I mean, it's it's an un it's an unbelievable thing when you when you really think about it. His career average is five two a carry. <laughs> five he's two another, a carry. He's another one of those Shanahan off the street running back success stories. And when it's said and done, if it keeps going like this, he might be the most successful of them all. Um, Look, no running back does it alone. I think that this is confirmation that the offensive line and its play has improved. We know that run blocking has not been nearly the problem that pass blocking has been. And there's some pass blocking problems, you know, still, Still out there, but this offensive line is better, and Mason is just, he's like a little bit of a throwback, Larry, because I miss the days of a workhorse back. I miss the days of a guy who you can just pencil in for 25 carries, and he's going to get stronger as the game goes along and all sorts of beat-your-chest football sayings like that. He's the real deal, man, and what a luxury that the 49ers have found in Jordan Mason while Christian McCaffrey is dealing with his injury. They've missed nothing. You know, I mean, they're different players yet somehow they're producing similar results. Because McCaffrey, if I do explain what he gives the Niners from the running back position more than anything else, more than diversity, scheme diversity, more than the ability to catch out of the backfield, the guy is, um, he generates explosive plays. When you have a running back that can generate explosive plays, you got an offense that can really get cooking. And this guy generates as many, if not more explosive plays than Christian McCaffrey does. He is eight to 12 yards down the field all the time. He really is. And anything over 10 yards is technically an explosive running play on the ground. I believe he leads the NFL in explosive running plays. He leads the NFL in 100-yard rushing games. He's had three of them so far this season, three and four. So, um, you know, he is he is everything that the 49ers wanted him to be, and he's certainly everything that they needed him to be right now going through this McCaffrey issue. So, um, doesn't look like Isaac Garendo is going to be knocking on his door, looking to take some reps away from him. I think Patrick Taylor does need to be the next man up until Christian McCaffrey returns because uh, I know Garendo is someone that we will talk about probably in unfavorable terms here, Larry. But um, you're right. Oh, you're, yeah. Yeah. Jordan yeah. Mason, uh, uh, you know, remember that name. Underlined it and bold, italicize it, and, and we need to pick. Is it Jordan Mason or J.P. Mason? I keep on hearing both. I think we need to determine which it is. I, I think we got to talk to Greg Pop about this one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'll say this. You know, the only un, the only uh, disappointing thing about the whole J.P. Mason story is that he has such a bad taste in his mouth from, you know, saying the wrong thing and feeling like the media, you know, took what he had to say and twisted it and this and that. So I, I don't know if you've seen his postgame interview, but they're they're joyless. I mean, it's just a it's just like, yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Right. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's like he's really doesn't want to be there. It's like really obvious. I haven't interviewed him this year because it's so obvious that he doesn't want anything to do with the media. And the last thing I ever want to do is sit down to do an interview with somebody who doesn't want to be talking to me. Right. You, you, uh, you do, yeah. You need a willing participant for an interview to produce anything. That's for sure. Yeah, um, I mean, was, it's, was it's different before this movie. Monday night snafu. I mean, did you notice? Know, because, you know, you're around the team. In the lobby, well, he was room. totally gregarious before that. 
Right. And now he's just stung by this media moment. So he's gone full Bill Belichick. I'm going to give you nothing. And if I give you nothing, you'll ask me less. Right. Right. And it's probably going to work for him. But unfortunately, it takes another, you know, another guy. I mean, like for you and me, we don't need quotes. No. I mean, if he flips the bird to the to the to the media core, it doesn't really affect us. It really just doesn't. Um, I'd love to say, you know, in an ideal world, I'd love every guy to be gregarious and share all kinds of great yarns with all of the media and this and that. But you know what? Um, if this guy doesn't want to talk, it's no skin off my nose. I don't need his quotes. I don't need to go up to his locker and ask him about it. He can keep rumbling for 120 yards a game and I can just, you know, wave to him from across the room. Hey, good to see you, bud. You know, I mean, I don't I don't need to I don't need to hear him talk. Um, but it is kind of unfortunate because he is the running back on a team that's, you know, you know, when when the running back goes for 123 yards and five one a carry, the you know, the people are standing at your locker and you got to say something. So he got through it, but it was it was painful to watch, and hopefully he'll get better. As far as Garendo, you know, I I mean, forget you know, I I said yesterday that you know I thought Garendo could be a key guy. Why? Because I was totally snookered by Chris Forster saying how awesome he looked, um, and in reality they're just trying to talk him up because they know they they need to have another guy, and they they know that everybody's kind of was down on his one carry, so now they're they're gonna try to like you know. We're going to tell you what, what we're seeing, but in reality, it's lies. Yes, it's lies. film don't lie. Film don't lie and game don't lie and production don't lie. And if you really believed he was the right guy to return kickoffs, upon making his first mistake, you wouldn't have yanked him, right? Right, and, and you know, he. if you really thought, yeah, he is the right guy for the job, you don't take it away from him the minute he makes his first mistake. So I thought that that was a real telltale sign. And we didn't see him involved in the game after that fumble. And it was the worst fumble of the day, of the game. I mean, he just, there was no way the Patriots were going to climb back into it. Uh, I even saw Shanahan saying like, you know, that's just, it's a player fumbling. I said, you can't blame it on a rookie. You can't blame it on a special teams play. No, 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 man. No, 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 no. Like this special teams is a problem. And Kyle Shanahan has basically told us he is uninterested in correcting this problem. Um, if you're looking to shake up a locker room that you're afraid might have some doldrums about it going left of center, and it would be very much left of center for the 49ers to fire anyone midstream. They just, they don't operate like that. They never have really as a franchise. They don't really now as a franchise, you want to get your locker room's attention. You start snatching careers that, that perks guys up in meetings and locker rooms and lets everybody know this is a season that is defined by us not fooling around here. And it seems like they're continuing to fool around on special teams every single week. It's a problem every week. Well, I mean, it, you know, this is the guy they, they drafted to be their return guy. I mean, they can see what I can see. He's not a running back. Otherwise he would be getting running back carries and he didn't, he got what we got one carry for no yards. Um, so they, they see that he, he's not a natural running back and he's just a big, strong, fast. I mean, if he can't be the kickoff returner, then what is what the hell is he on the team for? You know, what's he on the team for if he can't be the kick returner? So he's got to be the kick returner. So, I mean, I'd give him another shot. Um, he's explosive, but I mean, he's already had two. He's already had two. Where he's only care. How many touches? Let me, let me just look at this. How many touches has Isaac Garendo had this year? He has had seven carries. Seven carries, and I don't see any receptions. Um, so he had a couple. So so he's had less than 10 touches, and he already has. Um, was it? Was, I thought it was two fumbles. It says here one. Maybe just one. Okay. He's got one fumble. The other one, he just ran into the, into the uh, back of his offensive line. Yeah, so I mean, you know, he he just doesn't, he doesn't have running back instincts. He is big, strong, and fast. Um, he would be exciting if you can get him in open spaces, but if you can't trust him to hold the ball at all because it's just going to get popped out. I mean, you know, I mean, it's like you might need to redshirt this guy. You might need to, you, you know, you know the shame of it. He's big, strong, fast, and can't play, and he's on the active roster. And Keyshawn Vaughn is ready to rumble as a running back. And he's on the practice squad. 
<laughs> you know, well, they, they need to trade these guys. They need they need to put Garendo on the practice squad. Here's the thing, though. He's so big and so strong and so fast that if you put him on the practice squad, he probably gets plucked by an Arizona Cardinals. Then you're going up against him next week. So you got to kind of it's it's you know, they're in a weird they're in a weird pickle. You can't. You know, here's it's the like the Trey Lance thing all over again. You can't draft raw players and expect them to take, you know, 53 man roster spots. There's just not enough roster spots to go around. You're already going with 51 while other teams are going with 53. You can't you can't go with like 48. And you know, you got to have a full complement of players. I think it's, you know, look, there's no reason to try to flush the guy four games into his career either. Right. But it is unfortunate. You know, the 49ers needed someone to help in in kick return and they needed someone to back up Mason and it seems this guy right now is incapable of providing either uh you know I'm not going to say you should have kept Cody Schrader when he's not even on the Rams you know big boy squad he's a taxi he's a, he's a taxi squad player for the Rams but they probably should have kept Cody Schrader they probably could have kept Matt Breida um you know there there are other guys who have done the job and look getting back to Jordan Mason how is that night? How did that guy got not get carries in the Super Bowl? I mean, he was on this team last year. How is that guy not getting carries in the Super Bowl? Uh, they might have won it had he been in that game. Like that's oh, the forget that game, game, Damon. How about just that? He is. How about just leading up to that game to make CMC fresher? Exactly. Yeah. And by the way, uh, Jordan Mason is leading the NFL, I believe, in carries as well. So uh, Kyle Shanahan is uh, no new notes like no no lessons are going to be learned by Kyle Kyle's got a way of doing something I don't know if uh, you know he I don't know if he's got another real option that he trusts right now just based on the scores he doesn't the fact that Debo coming back from injury is right back to being his other running back that uh, that was a little surprising that was interesting um, to see Debo as a running back yeah, I didn't think they were going to ask him to do that that much again coming back from a you weren't even available last week situation i didn't think they would put that on him but i guess if the player is ready to play you play him um but they uh there's no doubt that kyle shanahan is intended to run jordan mason into the ground this year <laughs> he, he will he'll give that guy 400 carries if he can it may or christian mccaffrey might be able to save him at some point but jordan mason is going to be carrying the rock an awful lot and and here's the good news he can do it like, you know, you always want a pitcher who wants the baseball. You want a running back who wants the football, and Mason clearly does, and he's had great success with it, and the 49ers are back to 2-2 two and two because of it. Um, well, run, and they got a better run-blocking line. And and you know what? If if um, Ayuk is out of shape and um, you don't have a great pass-protecting line, then run the ball. Then run the ball. You have a monster runner. Just run him. And I, I have no problem with 24 carries. I mean, um, he's had 28, 20, 19, and 24. If he's feeling good, you know, go with it. Um, if he's not feeling good, that's another thing. You know, it's like if he, if he, if he can't, if you have to wheel him into the facility on a Wednesday, then, then, you know what I mean? Then maybe find, you know, you, you ease off on the carries. But if, if the guy's feeling good and by all accounts he is, you know what? Ayuk is clearly not Ayuk quite yet, but he looked better in this game than he looked in the previous game. So he's rounding into form. Let's let him round into form and just run the ball if you can. 